and welcome back to Nearly Nerds. Ladies and gentlemen, today it is my favourite day of the week. It is Friday, which means it is Fallout Friday. And today we're going to be doing a deep dive in the history of the Super Mutants. Now, the original plan for this video was to go away and give you a little bit of information as to why the Super Mutants appear in every title of the franchise. However, in doing my research, I realised there is so much information that I could give you on every single game as to why they exist. And I want to make sure that I give it to you in a nice, easy, digestible video. So the original plan is out of the window and I'm going to be giving you deep dives and full history breakdowns as to why the Super Mutants exist. So get yourselves comfortable, get yourselves some popcorn, because today we're going to be doing a deep dive on the history of the original Super Mutants of Fallout 1. Everything started in 2073 when West Tech were contracted to develop a general immunization agent against the new plague and biochemical weapons being used in China. Research and development proceeded and the Pan Immunity Virion project was formed. Early experiments with the Virion were fairly successful, although it came with side effects. Those side effects being increase in muscle mass and induction of replication even in normally non-replicating or slow replicating cells. These side effects attracted the attention of West Tech's military liaison, Major Barnett. In March 2075, Barnett ordered for further experimentation, specifically to research the side effects further. And successful tests on flatworms and small mammals confirmed PVP as an evolutionary mutagen, and was renamed Forced Evolutionary Virus. On January 6, 2076, West Tech was nationalised due to the military obtaining the West Tech sites in the name of national security. In January 2077, all FEV research undertaken at the Californian West Tech facility, known in-game as the GLOW, was moved to the newly established Mariposa military base, ready for human testing, even after many of West Tech's researchers recommended against it. Experiments continued under the supervision of a military security team, although they were not told the full truth about the experiments. Scientists used military criminals as test subjects. These experiments led to the perfection of the FEV strain, dubbed FEV2. Around October 10th, 2077, the soldiers at the base found out about the human test subjects. This caused Colonel Spindle to have a mental breakdown, locking himself away. Captain Maxon took lead and interrogated a scientist. This interrogation resulted in Maxon killing the scientist for essentially trying to justify his actions as orders from the government. Maxon's leadership was then reinforced following the suicide of Colonel Spindle. Maxon then continued the interrogations of the scientists over the following days, each time resulting in execution. One scientist by the name of Erin Shellman almost convinced him that it was all orchestrated by the government, but was executed anyway. This did, however, lay the seed of doubt in Maxon, who later announced secession from the United States on October 20th, 2077, following attempts to force the government to respond to the situation at Mariposa. Two days later, he ordered the families of the soldiers in his unit to take shelter within the facility, this being October 22nd. A day later, the bombs fell on October 23rd, 2077. Maxon was actually interrogating one of the final scientists, head researcher Leon von Felden, as the bombs fell. Leon von Felden can be seen in the Fallout TV show at the meeting held between vault and other corporations discussing ideas of what can be done with the vaults. Von Felden, although sceptical, suggests one of the vaults being used to experiment on illegal immigrants to create super mutant soldiers. This idea may have been taken seriously with Vault 87, but we will dig into that rabbit hole in a later video. When the bombs fell, Maxon and his unit lost contact with the outside world, although the base proved to be well equipped to protect the inhabitants from what was happening outside. Fearing China may realise they missed them as a target, Maxon ordered the relocation of his soldiers and their families. On October 25th, Sergeant Plattner volunteered to take atmospheric readings from outside of the base and reported no significant amounts of radiation in the atmosphere. Thus, final plans for the exodus were made. On October 26th, Maxon ordered the burial of the scientists in the waste outside of the base and a day later, on the 27th, his men and their families left the base for Lost Hills, a government bunker in the south under the leadership of Captain Maxon. The Mariposa military base was left sealed, but over the span of many years it became derelict and eventually various creatures would find their way in and due to exposing themselves to the FEV would mutate. 
These mutant creatures would infect the surrounding areas of the base, attacking human settlements and caravans that would cross their path. This became a huge problem, and so a caravan master by the name of Harold would mount an expedition to locate and destroy the source of the mutants in 2102. One of the explorers who took part in the expedition was a Dr. Richard Gray. Richard Gray was a former vault dweller who was exiled from his vault for murder. He later found shelter as the Doctor of the Hub, one of the more prominent locations of the original Fallout. There, he established himself as the Doctor and was revered by the community, who considered him a brilliant Doctor. When Gray joined the expedition, he assumed leadership and led Harold and a group of explorers northwest of the Hub to the locations of where the majority of the attacks took place. And on June 23rd, 2102, they came across the Mariposa military base, rampant with hordes of mutated creatures. They fought their way in, but failed to account for the automated defences inside. They took heavy casualties, and only Richard and Harold survived to reach level 4, the deepest level where the FEV vats were located. Upon discovering the vats and exploring the level, a robotic crane struck Harold and Richard. Harold was knocked out immediately, later awakening outside of the base in the wasteland. His last memory was seeing Richard thrown into a vat of what looked like an acid bath, this of course being FEV. Richard Gray floated unconscious in the vat for a whole week, barely avoiding drowning. In agony and severely mutated, Gray dragged himself from the vats and somehow made his way to the control room. As his mutation began to stabilise, Gray realised his mental capacity was increased considerably. He was now capable of resolving the most complex of philosophical questions. Gray started to experiment on the animals infesting the base by dipping them into the FEV vats. It's only when he dipped a rat and a dog at the same time, resulting in the combined creature, that the concept of unification really hit him. Gray grew frustrated with a lack of test subjects, and without a full understanding of the virus, began to inject FEV into various parts of his body. In December 2102, Gray realised that following his injections, he had gained the ability to neurologically link with the computers, giving him access to the databanks of the military base. Aided by his new knowledge, Gray began to experiment on humans who strayed into the military base, with little success. However, in January 2103, he isolated radiation exposure as the defining factor affecting transformation success. Following this revelation, Gray was able to create his first intelligent supermutant, also having the ability to assimilate with the mutant's mind, creating the fledgling hive mind. Over the next 27 years, Gray, who now went by the Master, gathered test subjects from local human communities. Though communities were scarce, he was able to build a small army, slowly but surely. But when the winter of 2130 hit, it really slowed down production, due to a shortage of human specimens. In 2131, the Master decided to go back to his original plan to intercept caravans crossing the wasteland due to increasing numbers of traders. The human settlements were oblivious to the truth of the abductions and assumed the missing caravans were down to wasteland monsters. This ignorance allowed the Master to grow his army exponentially and by 2137 he had enough super mutants to self-sustain mass production. And while the success rate was between 15-20%, to 20%, around half of those would go on to join the Master's army, which quickly grew to be a substantial military force, which the Master named Unity. In 2155, one of the Master's patrols located a group of vault dwellers from a Los Angeles vault, and he chose to transfer himself to the vault and occupy the overseer's quarters. The vault was originally made to be a demonstration vault, however, as the war struck and the bombs fell, people flocked to the vault for protection and it did what it was intended to do, and protected the inhabitants from the fallout. The Master also had the Mariposa military base rebuilt and restored, giving power to the Lieutenant, one of the greatest super mutant minds yet created. The Mariposa military base became just as magnificent as it was before the war, and was now home to the super mutants. They restocked the armories and medical supplies, and used it as their staging area for the conquest of the wasteland, as well as the only known super mutant production centre. Over the next seven years, until the dates of which the original fallout take place, 2162, the Master would continue to add to his army, expanding over California, preparing to make their presence known. And that is how the original Super Mutants came to be. During the events of Fallout 1, we find out that the Master acquired the help of the Children of the Cathedral, essentially to be the public face of the Unity. And by the end of the events of Fallout 1, when the Master is destroyed along with the Cathedral, and if you destroy the military base, the Super Mutants, without leadership, flee to the east into No Man's Land. And we will pick up in a future video what is to come of them. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! If you enjoyed that video, why not subscribe? If you enjoyed that video, why not subscribe? It'll help me and Natty continue to do the work that we're doing, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thanks! <laughs>